We're going to be joined by our public affairs analyst, Honorable Cletus Obun, who will be joining us virtually to share his thoughts with us on some of these developing national issues. Hello and good morning, Honorable. On this Good Friday morning from the south south of Nigeria, city of Uyo, that will host the, the egg Super Eagles of Nigeria tomorrow. 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 Yeah, interestingly, Honorable Clayton Obuni, it may seem as though uh, you're more drawn towards the Gotul Akbabi International Stage uh, Stadium for the game tomorrow. But some of the fans will be loving to travel and watch this game are complaining about the ongoing fuel scarcity occasioned by a hike in PMS price. Yesterday, we saw the meeting between the VP, the NMDPR, the NNPC GCO, and uh, Malam Muhurabadu. And it's on the promise that by weekend, this situation would be resolved. The marketers are saying that uh, it might not be as arithmetically possible as it was said by the minister. What are your thoughts on this? I have made the point in your program and at your sister stations to the effect that NNPC is going to run this country on the ground. This fuel scarcity is simply uh, one bit and one bite too hard. And uh, I would like to believe the vice president that this has to go away as like a bad dream. We don't want to have this sustained and protracted because it portends a very bad chapter in our, our national life as a country. And for me, I imagine that it, will, it is going to be uh, a quick fix for, because it's not, uh, it, 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 is, it didn't come out from the blues. This was orchestrated, programmed, and deliberate by NNPC. And I think that something has to be drastically done and urgently too, because there is no justification under the sun for what they are talking about. The fuel price hike and the circumstances leading to it are deliberate and programmed by those who think that making profit is more important than keeping the life of human beings in this country than, as a matter of fact, keeping the unity of this country and keeping the peace. Because this is clearly a disruption of the peace, an attempt to disrupt public peace. And those who are involved in this very heinous sabotage most definitely, this is an invidious and insidious invasion of the Nigerian life, national life, and it's a threat to our national life and the peace of this country. The security of this country is threatened by this very fact of this fair price. So I think that something urgent has to be done, and the vice president has to step in since the uh, president is not around. Well, well, on Wednesday, we saw reports in the news that a protest had broken out in Delta State following the news of um, a new four-pound price, which many Nigerians would agree that it is too high for them to, uh, to afford. And now, this morning, there was also another report in the news that in Kwara State, yet another protest has broken out. Now, this is just two states out of about 36 states in the country. Are we going to see successions of such agitations and protests springing up from different quarters of the country due to the hardship of the situation caused by the fuel scarcity and the high price in palm price? Price. As if the protests are sustained and sporadic because this is clearly beyond the beyond anybody's endurance capacity. The inelastic endurance capacity of Nigerians is being taken for granted. And I imagine that uh, the, 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 the fixers and the, uh, those who govern and control our petroleum resources are going to rise to the occasion and fix this matter up. I, like I said, I will not be surprised if there is a sporadic and an intense explosion of anger across the country in different states. These two states only mark a symbolic rise in the temper and temperature of the Nigerian people. And I expect that the authorities are going to take this very seriously. You cannot even in any case deal with the tragic, the very tragic paradox that on the day that Gute says I'm rolling out PMS, that is petrol from our refinery, is the day that the prices will go up. 
whereas Nigerians have been jubilating and fighting that Dangote must produce in order to reduce the foil price since importation was a crisis. Now that it is being produced in Nigeria and in Lagos, we are being told that foil prices on the same day, the provocation is simply <laughs> un unimaginable. Well, well, this well, is simply well, uncontrollable well, and this is unbearable. I know Nigerians should wish this upon us at this time. Therefore, I am asking and demanding that the authorities must have to do something with NNPC. For NNPC to say that as a controller, as a regulator, it has become a dealer, it's, it's, it's a, it, it beats all kinds of economic theory. There is no economic theory that can sustain that, that the regulator should become a dealer in a market in which it is supposed to control and regulate prices, and we are told that it is going to be by market forces. Are market, market forces controlled by spirits? These are human factors, and I think that the, 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 the NNPC and those who are staying in NPC to inflict this injury on Nigerians must be brought to book as saboteurs. There are clear cases of sabotage by the, those controlling NNPC. And I have made the point here, and it bears repeating, that NNPC is running a republic of its own outside the Republic of Nigeria. And that has to change. Otherwise, NNPC is going to cut an evil that will make this country simply uncontrollable, unmanageable, and ungovernable. What we are doing to Nigerians is simply unacceptable. You, you, you and this has to change. You mentioned that Nigerians were waiting for the Angote refinery to roll out its uh, petroleum products, which will hit at all drop the prices of petroleum products in the country. And when that happened, on the day it happened, NNPCL, you know, declared or announced a new fuel pump price. And they are also releasing a statement saying that Langote Refinery's pump price is determined by FX rates, by FX forces. How true is this? And how, uh, how much of an explanation does NNPCL have to give Nigerians over this maths that is not adding up? to you. As a student of political economy, I insist that what they are talking amounts to complete balderdash. It doesn't make any economic sense. You tell us that it is controlled by FX. So why are you announcing a, fuel, a pump price? Why not allowing the forces to play out on the day that NMPC rolls out its products? Why are you announcing the price? Why didn't you allow us to go to the fuel and let them go to tell us his story? You are doing everything to frustrate and go to because you have some personal beef to, 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 to settle. That's all that we can see. The day that Gute is coming out to say this is fuel, you turn around and fix the price and announce it and tell us that it is controlled by market forces. Our market forces here resident in NNPC. Our market forces here resident in NNPC. Are the market forces resident in uh, announcement sheets? Is it there by these circulars that it keeps up and then making it impossible for us to operate? Why are they announcing the prices? We expect that once Dangote rolls out, it means that fuel is now coming from Nigeria in Naira, and therefore the FX story does not add up. Let them explain to us. What are they giving to Dangote? Is it in Naira or is it in dollars? If it is in Naira, how come the FX is now determining the price? If it is in dollars, what is the exchange rate as at the time of this uh, pricing? Because it should be determined by the transportation and other such things. You had things that they were doing to ameliorate and cushion the effect of transportation as it's called uh, 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 by NNPC all this time. The petroleum equalization fund and all such things. I mean, is it not a paradox that if you are in Abuja, you buy fuel for 680 naira, 690 naira. As at the time I left Abuja last Friday, by the time you get to Makodi, you are buying for 960 naira. You get to Ogoja and Obudu and get to Ecom, you are buying for 950 naira. So the closer you get to the production point of oil, where oil is produced, the higher the price. The further away you go from where oil is produced, the cheaper the price. What economics is that? How do you explain that? Is it a equalization fund? Is it also FX? Is it that foreign exchange that determines these prices? And if it is so, I ask, why is NNPC the one announcing the prices? Why are we not seeing it play out? Why is Dangote not the one explaining to us? Dangote has come out to tell us his own side of the story. Why is NNPC giving us another gibberish? Why are they speaking in tongues? Why is NNPC doing this to Nigerians? The Federal Republic of NNPC must be dismantled if Nigeria must know peace. 
especially in the oil sector, the regulator has been compromised. And those who are running that show, that circus show, that invidious circle of wickedness in NMPC must be brought out and told that they have overstayed their welcome. This is now, all that we want to see. I do not know why they are being kept. This is exactly what we suffered when the service chiefs under Buhari were being kept unduly for too long and the country was going down in terms of insecurity in the northeast and other parts of Nigeria. We now, cried out and I said, quite rightly, those people should... Quite upon is the tenor of the NMPC GCEO, Mr. Miele Kiari, who is now in his second tenor. Many Nigerians would also allude to what you're saying in terms of the balance of trade and this controversy over pricing. Whilst most Nigerians were elated that crude will be sold to Dangote in Naira, now the NMPCL is telling us in difference that the price would now be pegged against Forex. Now, coming to who can act to rescue Nigerians in terms of the current situation, we've seen statements from the House of Reps Minority Caucus, we've seen statements from the Afani Ferre, and other well-meaning Nigerians. But in actuality, what can Nigeria do as the federal government has distanced itself from this new price, blaming the NNPCL solely? Again, it only a, a confirmation that Again, we run. It only it, it, that we run two republics in Nigeria. Who is federal government and who is NNPC? Is NNPC on its own? Is it a behemoth? Is it shapeless? Is it not controlled by the Nigerian federal government? So Nigerian, by if the federal government is telling us that NMPC is doing things that it cannot control, then it means NMPC is beyond the federal government. So it is running a government of its own. And I've made the point that nobody has challenged it, that since 1999, and I don't want to go beyond 99 because Nigerians have a propensity to forget without regret. I want to make the point that since 1999 from Mobas and to date, no Nigerian president, even as a government, knows how much was the quantity of crude that NMPC produces, how much it sells, and how much it brings to its coffers. Such that even the Federal Inland Revenue Services tells us that for some time, sometime up to two years, NMPC remits nothing to the coffers of the federal government. If a, an arm of government, if an agency of government like NMPC, which is the live wire, the blood upon which Nigeria survives, can treat Nigeria like that, as a government and as a people, then clearly it has there must be a way of taking it down. And the only way to do so, the only way to do so is for the federal government to tell us that they are on the side of Nigerians. Because Nigerians are the ones bearing the brunt of all that is happening in NMPC. NMPC has become a boil on the neck of Nigerians. That is to say, our ten fingers are now infected and infested with Whitlow. And that Whitlow is NMPC. We have no resting place, and Nigerians must rise in one voice and ask that true Nigerians must come to NMPC. The profiteers in NMPC must be asked to take the back seat and allow Nigerians breathe. Now, Honorable Obun, Nigerians we've seen the people's now, Honorable the, Obun. the tenth assembly repeatedly hand out invitations to the NMPCL, the NMDPRA, in terms of its oversight in questioning some of these discrepancies that you have quite noted, but uh, over some time now, those invitations have been outrightly disregarded. How does the People's Parliament, now with uh, the minority caucus greeting the frontline pages in headlines, leading the calls for an overhaul, much like you're saying, what's your confidence that the 10th Assembly will be able to nip this in the bud? Uh, uh, the, the, the minority caucus is playing politics to ensure that uh, it is relevant. If there is supposed to be action, the Nigerian constitution, and I know that under the president of the Senate, God will acquire upon resumption, it is unfortunate that the National Assembly is on recess. I am very sure that as soon as they resume, this will definitely be settled because I know that the populist Senate president is going to undertake to ensure that this will not happen. The Constitution is clear about rejection. The constitutional and parliamentary jurisdiction of the National Assembly is enshrined in the Nigerian Constitution. And there are consequences for not respecting invitations by the National Assembly. And that is what gives powers to the National Assembly, especially the Parliament, to exercise quasi-judicial powers. 
That is to say, the National Assembly can invoke its powers under Section 88 or thereabout, where it can issue a warrant of arrest on any person who falls within its parliamentary jurisdiction, who fails to honor its invitation, can have a warrant of arrest issued, and the police must act on that warrant of arrest. It is constitutional. So to tell me or tell Nigerians this morning that NNPC have been rejecting the invitation by the National Assembly, this assembly cannot pretend to be a toothless bulldog. It has too many powers in the Constitution unless there's something to hide because NNPC has become an epidemic, near a near pandemic that is affecting every home in Nigeria, whether it is by diesel or by kerosene, whether it is by petrol, because everything in Nigeria devolves around power, energy, and petrol. When um, uh, um, Chiwezu, the radical Marxist writer, wrote Energy Crisis, a poem in which he dealt with the issue of petroleum during the Q crisis, the Qs of the 1980s. He didn't anticipate that by 2024 in the 21st century, Nigeria will still go through that route in which NNPC will again punish Nigerians with its ineptitude, greed, and outright corrupt practices. Because there is no other reason for which we can explain that NNPC is telling us stories, cock and bull stories, about how there is no fuel, about how foreign exchange determines prices. We ask again and again, if it is determined by market forces and foreign exchange. What was the foreign exchange the day it came out to announce that the price, price of template. petrol per well, liter is well, 1,000 well, 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 on the day well, that it was coming out? Honorable Cletus, you, you, you mentioned that a lot of things in the country are hinged on the affordability and availability of uh, petroleum products. Uh, due to this crisis currently going on, we have seen Naira crash into about 1,639 Naira to a dollar. Commuters are paying up to 50 to or even 100% uh, increase in transport fares. And in reports in the news this morning are saying that beans, a bag of beans, has hit about 200,000 naira in places like Kano and Lagos, and a bag of local rice has hit 140,000 naira in Kaduna. These prices are quite outrageous, considering what the hardship that Nigerians are already faced with. How much longer do you think Nigerians can survive this very heavy burden caused by NNPCL and their cohorts? As sitting on a keg of gunpowder, we are sitting on tenter hooks. We are on tenter hooks. Nigeria is endangered and imperiled on account of the activities of a cartel that insist that the punishment and the suffering of Nigerians is the breakfast with which they can show, their, show off their new wealth. There is no other explanation to it. That the only way in which people in NNPC feel that they are big men and that they now control the world and the world is in their pocket, to use the words of Hadley Chase, that the world is in their pocket, is to see Nigerians groveling and eating from the dustbin. Nigerians crippled. Lagos State government has already declared that you can work from home with what? Because there is no, the national grid is collapsing, so you have to depend on petrol. So why won't the price of beans go up? Because transportation has gone up. And I have made a point here. Bring down the price of oil and the price of everything in Nigeria will crash this morning. If by the time I leave this studio, a price of petrol goes to 500 naira, those prices are talking about a, a bag of beans will crash below 100,000. When I was saying it the other day on another station that the price of Gary had moved from 35,000 in my place that the business of Gary had moved from 35,000 to 24,000. Some people almost crucified me thinking I was talking voodoo economics. But I was speaking from the village market where I was sitting in Ogoja, in Okonde, in Sankola, in Bumaji, in Bashwa, in Ikom. They were selling a bag of a, 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 a business of Gary for 24,000. It jumped from, from 40,000 to 35 to 24. And it was coming down to 18. And with this now, I won't be surprised if the time it is 50,000 naira by this morning because everything to get to the market now you have to pay double a liter of fuel in south south nigeria today as i speak to you is 1500 naira at the minimum 1000 so it's moving to 2000 naira per liter that is where we are today as we speak in filling stations in filling stations not 
black market, not by the roadside, in filling stations. They are selling fuel for 1,500. That is if you find it to buy. The queues are simply unbearable. To stay on the queue now is a day job. You have to go and queue for a day or two all night. As I speak to you only yesterday, it to Calabar Road was blocked by a fallen trailer which blocked the road. And people start out from 1 p.m. 1 p.m. in the afternoon to 11 p.m. in the night. They couldn't get their way to Uyo or to Calabar. These are the kind of things that can bring about things like the Arab Spring. And this is not what this government told Nigerians they want to do. That is not what we preached. I campaigned for this president. We did not tell Nigerians that NNPC was different from the Nigerian government and that therefore we cannot control NNPC. That is not our promise. And I want to see the president take action from wherever he is because it's a national emergency. And he must step in and show that he's the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Dismantling an MPC is a tax that must be done and done urgently. It is no longer a matter for discussion. Those actors in NMPC are acting to sabotage this country and throw this country into a war of attrition because the war of survival is the only way to go now if NMPC is not dissolved and the price of petrol is immediately controlled. The federal government of Nigeria under President Tinubu can do something. The Senate president is called upon now as the parliamentarian of the people, the people's parliamentarian, to come out and make a statement and ensure that NMPC does not push Nigeria and plunge Nigeria into a, a major crisis. The upheaval is coming. Yes or not, it may be delayed, but certainly if this continues, I am not and can't guarantee that Nigerians will be able to take this. Therefore, I'm calling on the Nigerian government, all arms of government, all one million Nigerians, to call on NMPC for the dissolution of everybody in NMPC and the takeover of NMPC by the Nigerian government. Because as it is today, no matter the money we make from NMPC, it is to feed the Nigerian people with good roads, to fix it with the student's loan, to fix it with good lighting system, the energy and power, to fix Nigeria by increasing wages as Nigeria has done. But it is not in any way to punish Nigerians and to make Nigerians suffer for the God gift that they have from under their soil. This is not the intentment of God. It is also not the desire of Nigerians and those living in Nigeria. We enough of the NNPC punishment, enough of the sufferings arising from the mismanagement of our resources by those who are managing NNPC and those who are making sure that patrol has now become a punishment rather than indeed a blessing from God. Let it not become a cause. And those who are doing this must be brought to book because this is a clear case of sabotage. Now, Honorable, thank you for your ardent calls to those in power and well meaning Nigerians on the current situation and state of the nation. Whilst the newspapers this morning have largely dwelt on the issues with the petroleum conundrum and price fixing issues, one of the papers is now looking at a different issue in terms of insurgency and banditry, with the call on authorities to prosecute Bello Turji. Let's just remind our viewers before we ask you of your opinion about the coverage as published earlier by the Daily Sun newspaper. On the Daily Sun newspaper, it earlier had the headline, Northern Elders warn against deals with bandits leader Turji. Insists suspect must face law. Caution Tinubu against reconciling him as national security is at stake. Ndume rallies military to clear Boko Haram terrorists from Sambisa Forest. Now this is a subject, Honorable, you have been very vehement and vocal about. But the challenge here is the access of such rebel leaders to social media on which they flaunt some of the ransom monies they collect. The other day, Bello Turji was also flaunting an armored car in which he claimed to have taken over from the Nigerian military. In light of all this, many ask how we can deploy non-kinetic efforts at forestalling this. And I remember that in our studios last week, you were very vocal about this again. Is this a call to the office of the NSA or who in particular should be leading this course to curb the likes of Bello Turji? Well, uh, Belo Chiji is, uh, Belo is a, a metaphor. It's a metaphor of the Nigerian conundrum, the Nigerian rule reversal of the Nigerian state. It's a metaphor for our, the failure of state actors and the tolerance of non-state actors as partners. The day we started bringing 
bandits and saying that we are retraining them. Unlike they were trying to do what we did in the Niger Delta when they were talking about bringing militants and training them to be useful. That was because the militants were engaged in some illegal fuel refineries along the creeks. If you now turn their brains to use that brain to do something more useful, it is a different matter from those who come and say that the life history and their times on earth will be spent disemboweling people, butchering people, beheading people, taking video shots of that and displaying them the, on the internet. You do not equate those two. There is no basis for that. So the day Nigerian government under the last regime decided that they are going to befriend bandits who specialize in the murder, gruesome murder, and display of such murder on, our, on the internet. That was the day we got it wrong. Two, unlike in the past, which this government has done and must be given a pass mark, there is a synergy within the forces. Between the Air Force, the Navy, and the Nigerian Army, there is a synergy. Between the intelligence community, the Nigerian Intelligence Agency, the, the, the Director of State Services, DSS, the Military Intelligence Group, and all, I, I can today say that there is a synergy. And that's why we must thank the Director of Military Intelligence, the Director of uh, um, Defense Intelligence. The CDI, Chief of Defense Intelligence, has ensured the coordination of intelligence, which is now leading to the kind of elimination we are seeing in the Northeast and in the Northwest, and in which there is a reduction, drastic reduction in acts of banditry. So when Ndume talks about Sambisa Forest and the Nigerian military going there to evacuate and do the last, I'm sure that he's talking about a total cleanup because you will all agree that there's uh, a, a, a massive, massive reduction in the quantum of stories we get from the Northeast yeah, about uh, Boko Haram and banditry, and especially even in the Yobe state was hit again. When you say there's a massive reduction, those in Yobe might beg to differ because days after the Mafa massacre, bandits once again struck in Yobe state. It almost feels as though whilst we're winning in some pockets, some other upspringing, or would I say those who have been flushed out of such corridors migrate to the next available corridor. get their citizen in Brilinguari Forest, eliminating the bandits, the captors of that boy, and taking the boy back to the U.S. How did they do it from Washington, from New York? How did they do it from the Oval Office? What happened? Why can't we now go pray to them and seek collaboration to do the same? You cannot be telling me that war in a desert can be like war in Buki Forest. You cannot tell me that what happened in Cambodia, Vietnam, is the same thing that should happen in what you are calling Sambisa Forest. I have done martial art in Goza, in the camp where military, I mean, um, what do you call them, the, 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 the mobile police force used to train its personnel. I have been there. That is what they are calling forest. I come from the last pristine forest on the West African coast which is the Takamanda, between Takamanda Forest and the Okwango Division of the Cross River National Park, down to Oban in Akankwa. That forest has not been touched since Adam was created. So that is what you call a forest. But what they are calling, how can there be a forest in the savannah? So we are just pretending and using terminologies to obfuscate what the reality is. I think that once the military is ready to go there, the Nigerian army that has gone to Congo, Liberia, Sierra Leone, that has gone to, to Somalia, We'll turn around and say that there's a forest in Sambisa. There's no such thing. I no, think no, it's no, a matter of the honorable, political will. I ask you, the uh, biggest fish market in West Africa is the Baga fish market. Have you ever heard any explosion in Baga fish market? Why is it so? Is it a coincidence? Something a, a fishy is people, happening. A, a lot of people would, would, would argue that the insurgents or the bandits in the northwestern part of the country are not invisible and are not invincible. Considering the fact that journalists in the past have gone there to meet them in their hideouts and have had interviews with them both locally and internationally.
Now, this begs the question, why is it that the Nigerian security forces have not been able to utilize the information gotten by these journalists who are residents in Nigeria to fish out these bandits hiding in plain sight, as many would agree? What do you think about this? My last statement, that some people feel that they can only survive by the continuation of this guerrilla warfare going on in the Northeast with the bandits. The, the chief of um, uh, defense staff and the chief of army staff have cleared Kaduna Road. Are you still hearing of anything on Kaduna Abuja Road in recent times? All that has gone because there was a determination, there was a will to take down everybody on that route, going on that road, going to Abuja, between Abuja and, and Kaduna. A situation where even trains were stopped and passengers on the train are taken hostage and captive. If that is happening, what is happening to this? Like you rightly said, BBC, Radio Dutch Vela, they've come out here and gone to interview this people and even brought it on. So how come they can get there? Is it that our military that cannot get there? So there is something that is going on that somebody is not telling us. And my proposal has been simple. Can we map out this country into six geopolitical zones, taking out the flashpoints like Borno State, like Zamfara, in which we get combat helicopter and on uh, uh, drones to do surveillance for us, there are drones that even in darkness can take snapshots. How was the military commander uh, in uh, Iran taken out by the U.S.? How did, what, what happened? How did he get taken out in a convoy? How come we can deploy this, that technology? How come we cannot collaborate and cooperate and seek assistance from our, in, our international uh, 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 partners to say to you, the Israelis, the Americans, the United uh, Kingdom, can you please help us with your equipment, Russia. Can you take us with your equipment and take these people out for us? Why, what's difficult about that? The price of a drone is not beyond Nigeria. What an NPC is doing to us here now, the money they loan, what an NPC is keeping, that money alone can give us drones for the six geopolitical zones and give us combat helicopters because we have the manpower and we have enough trained officers that can do anything because they've done it across the world. Why is it that when we are going for international warfare, the entire world looks up to the Nigerian army. And when it comes to internal crisis, especially domestic hostilities, we are seen to be lacking. It is because there is no political will. And I want to see that will energized, activated, and then deployed for the purpose of keeping Nigeria safe. Because the issue of banditry and the issue is an international trade. And somebody must have to pay for it. And in Nigeria, we cannot afford it, especially in this period that is combined with economic crisis. We cannot face a war of attrition, and then go ahead to start facing economic crisis at the same time. And that is why I feel that those who are doing this on the petroleum front are waging entirely another war. It's another type of war, an economic warfare, which is even more dangerous than the bandits, because this is worse than banditry. Because in this one, nobody is spared. Whereas in banditry, there are pockets of ungoverned places that the bandits use. In the case of this economic sabotage, everybody everywhere from the villages of Gambarungala to Brass, down to Danare, all the way to Gakum, all the way to Ogulafo, everybody is affected. From Ila down to Goza, you are affected. Nobody is spared. Whether it's a Keke rider or those who, ent who join the Keke, whether it is Okada man or it is a bus driver, you are affected. Food prices do not know anybody. And hunger has no neighbor. Everybody is affected. And majority of Nigerians are affected. Therefore, to curb this, we will need to deploy every cobble and everything judiciously to ensure that Nigeria and Nigerians are saved from the cartel that wants to see Nigeria expired. Is it that they have an agenda? If that is the agenda, can this president, along with the Nigerian Senate and the Nigerian people, not rise to the occasion and ensure that nothing of this nature happens to us because you, it is unbecoming that in the 21st century we are begging the question about what to do with a bailout who has clearly shown that he is simply just an outcast 
He is simply some, a, 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 a saboteur of our country and a man who is not ready for any peace deal. He ought not to be, in any case, to contemplate negotiation with Belu is to say that the Nigerian state has failed because we have no business discussing with such a, a character. We have no business and no place for him. How are you going to reform a man who has so much blood in his hands, who is so bloodthirsty, a Dracula on parade, All right, Satan please. unchained and unleashed on the Nigerian people, and you turn around to say you want to discuss with him. What are you discussing with him? There is no basis for any discussion with a man of that nature, and the Nigerian has a duty to take him down and take him out of the way. Otherwise, we are going to run into more crises. And that is just one symptom that we are finding in a bello. Mm. Because beyond bello, there are other bellows hiding there. And he's generating more and more of them by the kind of things that he's doing on a daily basis by recruiting young people, training them, and unleashing them on the society. And in this... Well, Honorable Clayton Zabun, we do appreciate you for your vehement positions reacting to issues in the news with a call to action charging the president, the president of the Senate as well, and the Office of the National Security Advisor to curb insurgency, banditry, and beyond the economic sabotages you have alleged that is robbing Nigeria of its national reserves.